Hello and welcome to yet another Knife Making Tuesday. I'm your host John Grimsmo and this week we are in full production mode. Lots and lots and lots of finishing work. Eric's been disc sanding like crazy and I've been machining and finishing up many things. Uh, the blades are underway and uh, the handles are completely finished off to tumblers tomorrow and uh, things are going just fantastically well. So what little I did get to film this week uh, I will show next. Right now I'm finishing up my new clamps that I'm going to be using on the blades for hard milling. Uh, this new clamp design has two bolt locations instead of just one so it'll hold the blade down a lot better, a lot flatter. My tolerances are better with the step um, size and all that and they match the blade perfectly. So yeah because with the first batch um, I did have a few blades slip while hard milling and that's not fun so let's try to avoid that this time. Right now all the blades that you see there are just acting as spacers basically. Um, in the final, when I actually machine the blades, I won't be using two clamps per blade, I'll just be using one of my old style clamps um, on the back end of the hand of the blade and then on the important end be using one of these two bolt clamps. Um, so you can see the two bolts just hold it very snugly right where all the milling is taking place and then this last one just keeps the back end down from buzzing around but there are two clamps because um, this fixture is designed to be able to flip the blades over and this other clamp is opposite like mirror image it goes the other way whereas this one goes that way might make more sense if I zoomed in on that guy see the first set I did there left and right and you can see it mimics the shape of the blade very nicely. Um, this is rough milled, so those milling marks will end up going higher and farther in on the tanto portion once um, once it's reached the final depth of, of edge milling. So these clamps are 4140 steel. Um, no real reason I picked that, just to give me the option to harden them if I wanted to. And I've got an air blast on the fog buster there just because I didn't want to make a mess with coolant. I just cleaned up pounds of titanium from the mill. So, uh... That wing is clean. That wing is clean. Got two buckets full of titanium scraps. I had to stomp those down to be able to make them fit. And then uh, the bigger chunky pieces are in this box over here. So it's 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm just about to pack it in. Uh, I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of an update, show you some cool stuff we've been doing. Eric's getting all the clips sanded up to 600 grit. And then I made a quickie fixture um, to drill those pinholes. Eric will explain that to you tomorrow because I'm going to have him run it. Um, finish these clamps. They turned out really nice. Love it. So I have enough for two fixtures worth. And um don't think I showed this yet. An astute observer would notice something funky about this guy. It's a lefty. 
a true complete lefty with the lock bar and the clip and everything on the and the thumb stud on the left hand side. Got it assembled with some ball bearings. No detent, no lock up yet. However, oh my goodness, it is so smooth. So ridiculously smooth. Put a little bit of a detent on this thing, it's just gonna fly. Oh, I can't wait. Yep, knives are coming together. I'd like to say better than I expected, but I have very high expectations. So they're coming together exactly as expected, which is fantastic. Um, let's see what else. Underneath mat number one. Bunch of completely finished handles. Disc sanded up to 600 grit. They look great at 600 grit. Eric did an amazing job. He actually wrote me a note. Nice guy. Yeah, so these ones are perfect. Uh, it's kind of a shame we're gonna end up tumbling most of these because they look so good. But, I mean, the big thing is getting all these scratches out. This one's actually not so bad. There's some in the back there, but... I mean, a lot of these titanium handles have crazy scratches in them. That, um... You know, like, that scratch, you have to get it out, because tumbling doesn't get it out. And if you don't, it's gonna look stupid. So, all these handles have been disc sanded to 220 grit. And so all the big scratches are out, but there's still a lot of 220 swirl marks in them. And all these, I think, have also been disc sanded to 220 grit. And they've all been scotch breaded, and all the edges and stuff are super nice. Here's a little tidbit of interesting information for you guys. So I've got my blades here, they're all heat treated, they're all at 60.5 Rockwell, nice and hard, and I'm reaming the pivot holes. Um, before heat treat I machined them to .181 inches, and now I'm going to ream them to .1875 with a carbide reamer. Um, except I want that reamer to follow the hole, not to make a new hole, you know what I mean? To Not to... Uh, make the hole a little bit off center because if there's any positioning issues at all. So I tried to make the overhang really long on the reamer so that it would flex just a little bit enough to find the hole and follow the hole itself. Whereas if I had a really short reamer it, it's possible that it would make the hole maybe slightly off center. I mean there's the possibility. Except the problem with having a really long end mill or reamer is that uh, it chattered a lot. And um, it reamed this hole, and then on the second hole, it blew up. 
So now I have a blade with a reamer stuck in it. Um, this should press out pretty easily, but I don't know if the hole will clean up very well at all. We'll see. It might. Um, so a long overhang on the reamer is actually not a good idea. So I'm just going to have to live with the possibility that it might ream the hole off-center. Um, but I don't know if that's even a possibility or not. I mean, my fixturing is pretty accurate. So it's more just a theoretical thing. Um, if I was really, really anal, which I might end up doing, is I could use my digital probe and probe the center location of every single hole and then ream exactly on that location. And that would be the most accurate way to do it. And I might do that eventually, but... Um, yeah, just food for thought. It's kind of sucky to blow up a reamer. Carbide reamer. And to have a blade that might be borked. But the grind looks good. The machined bevel. Super shiny! It's already got fingerprints all over it. So yeah, the blades are going pretty good. Lots of little details and learning curves, and I mean, even though I've made a ton of these already, it seems like every batch is... I want to change something. I want to make it slightly different. I want to change that arc. I want to change that toolpath. I want to make it do slightly something else. Um, there has to be a point where I just give up and say, yo, it's good enough. And I'm pretty close, I guess. <laughs> So I'm going to use my arbor press here to try to press out that piece of broken reamer. Safety first. Carbide is weird because it's super hard, but it's also super brittle. So this might actually shatter before pressing itself out. Ta-da! I think it did both. Broken piece. The hole definitely has some uh, vertical scars in it, but once I ream it properly, it might clean up. We'll see. No promises, but it's always nice to be able to save something if I can. In last week's video, I was talking about having to drill and ream these two little small holes in the bottom for a 1 16th reamer. Um, I wasn't able to do that during production, so I have to go back and do this afterwards for this batch. For the next batch, I'll be able to do it in production because I got it figured out. However, so how do I drill and ream those holes accurately? I tried doing it by hand with a drill, not very accurate. I don't have a drill press because I just don't really feel the need for one because I have this big awesome machine. Um, so what I ended up doing is using this big awesome machine to individually ream these. What I did is I took my clip fixture here and I machined two little pockets, one for righty, one for lefty, and I used these Mighty Bite cam action clamps. They're fixture clamps to uh, do that. The bolt head is actually off center, so as you rotate it, I don't know if you can see that, the hex nut moves in and out. So I just drop these in there, hold it down, tighten this, boom, they're tight, not going anywhere. 
Pretty awesome. So I have a code that's going to drill the hole slightly bigger and then ream it to the final size. And uh, it just does them one by one by one and it goes real fast. Alright, here it goes. Tool change to the drill. just moves over there so I can do this quickly. So you get the gist of that. Now I'm going to go through and do the reaming on the same thing. So I can do the whole batch, just drill, 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 and then we'll switch to the reamer. So I'm going to do a tool change. Well, that's it for this week, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching and remind you that in one month on May 31st for that weekend is Blade Show, which is the world's largest knife show. Uh, I'm going to have a table there, table 17D. If you're anywhere in the area, if you're going to stop by, if you're planning on showing up already, please come by my table, say hi. Or if you see me walking through the aisles, stop me, say hi, and uh, I'd love to chat with you. Um, we are also making quite a few very special knives for Blade Show. So maybe in the next few weeks we'll be doing some, uh, some sneak peeks and hints at those. Very, very excited to make those knives. They're going to be, uh, it's a Norseman, but it's going to be embellished and special and different than the norm. Um, so we're hoping to bring a good handful of those to the show. And uh, if you're planning on buying a knife at the show, well, you might get to end up with a very, very special cool one. So there you have it. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.